Uh, the government of Kenya has today announced a 4.5 billion U.S. dollar deal to fund green technology during the launch of the Africa Green Industrialization Initiative that was presided over by President William Ruto and the COP28 presidency. Now, this happening just a day after world leaders called for the complete phase-out of fossil fuel use that they say contributes mostly to greenhouse gas emissions and rising temperatures. Mashirima Kapombe is in Dubai and now reports. Over 200 heads of state and government congregated at the Dubai Exhibition Center for the 28th session of the Conference of Parties on Climate Change. Eight years ago, a moment like this took place in Paris, and now world leaders are here to take stock. Eight years ago, I was most touched to be asked to speak at the opening of COP21 in Paris, which of course culminated in the Paris Agreement a landmark moment of hope and optimism when nations put differences to one side for the common good. Despite all the attention, there is 30% more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now than there was back then, and almost 40% more methane. The topic on greenhouse gas emissions particularly is significant as UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for bold decisions to make a difference. We are miles from the goals of the Paris Agreement and minutes to midnight for the 1.5 degree limit. We cannot save a burning planet via fire holes of fossil fuels. We must accelerate a just, equitable transition to renewables. The science is clear. The 1.5 degree limit is only possible if we ultimately stop burning all fossil fuels. Not reduce, not abate, phase out with a clear time frame aligned with 1.5 degrees. The COP28 presidency has been under fire over what activists say is a conflict of interest by Dr. Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber, who chairs the COP, but also sits as the CEO of the Abu Dhabi national oil company ADNOC. A situation the UN Secretary General chose to address in his speech. So allow me to have a message for fossil fuel company leaders. Your old role is rapidly aging. Do not double down on an obsolete business model. Lead the transition to renewables using the resources you have available. Make no mistake, the road to climate sustainability is also the only viable pathway to economic sustainability of your companies in the future. President William Ruto called for more investment in green energy if the world is to achieve maintaining global temperatures within a 1.5 degrees Celsius limit. At the heart of our discussion at this COP28 must be a package of ambitious energy transition and investment goals and incentives. This entails a pledge to triple renewable energy capacity and double energy efficiency by 2030 alongside a significant reduction in fossil fuel dependency. But even as loss and damage financing pledges amounting to billions have been made by developed nations, activists are calling on vulnerable nations to be cautious. Even before we start even negotiations, even before the committee, the transitional committee on, uh, on loss and damage presents its report, we are blinded, we are masked by just little money. Then we forget the bigger picture, we start celebrating. We want to caution our leaders. Let us not fall into that trap of industrialized countries. Although the adoption of the loss and damage fund has been termed as a historical moment here at COP28, Climate justice activists and other world leaders say the complete phase out of use of fossil fuels is the solution. Mashirima Kapombe, Citizen TV, Dubai.